Good evening and welcome to this Ash Wednesday service coming to you from Parkway Presbyterian Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. We're glad that you can join us for this service. A couple of uh, pieces of information about this service itself. In the course of the service, we're going to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. So you will want to have uh, some elements by. If you were here in the sanctuary, the traditional elements, of course, are bread and wine or bread and an unfermented grape juice. But the church allows great latitude in the elements that are available to celebrate the supper together. So please find something that you find to be appropriate for the sacrament and we will celebrate that together. The other thing is this is Ash Wednesday and it is traditional to have the imposition of ashes, the ashes on the forehead and the sign of a cross. Those ashes are made from the palm fronds from Palm Sunday of the prior year. We will not be having that as part of this liturgy this evening, in part because we're doing this uh, remotely away from where you are at. If you would like to uh, self-impose something uh, on yourself, there are suggestions that you could use simply some, some dirt from your garden or a house plant. Uh, oil is always appropriate for uh, anointings, and water would also be available, but again, we are not going to do any of those during this time of worship. That's just something if you would like to do that on your own. Will you join with me now in our call to worship for this service? Drapes and banners of purple bring a somber tone to this space. Hymns sung in a minor key. Texts that lack light and laughter. Petitions rise as pleas for forgiveness. A cross stands at the end of the path, one we would rather lie down than take up. Can we bear to walk this way? Dare we look inside our own heart? Would that Lent would pass by in a night rather than linger for a season.
Will you join me in our unison prayer of adoration? Almighty and merciful God, out of the darkness of chaos, you brought forth light. In a desert wasteland, you provided manna. For a sin-sick world, you sent a savior. As we embark on a journey toward the cross, provide what we need for a richer faith, a greater love, and everlasting hope. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our reading from the Psalter tonight is the 51st Psalm, beginning in verse 1 and reading through verse 17. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your faithful love. Wipe away my wrongdoings according to your great compassion. Wash me completely of my guilt, purify me from my sin. Because I know my wrongdoings, my sin is always right in front of me. I sinned against you, you alone. I've committed evil in your sight. That's why you were justified when you render your verdict completely correct when you issue your judgment. Yet I was born in guilt, in sin, from the moment my mother conceived me. And yes, you want truth in the most hidden places. You teach me wisdom in the most secret space. Purify me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and celebration again. Let the bones you crushed rejoice once more. Hide your face from my sins. Wipe away all my guilty deeds. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Put a new and faithful spirit deep inside of me. Please don't throw me out of your presence. Please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Return the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach wrongdoers your ways and sinners will come back to you. Deliver me from violence, God. God of my salvation, so that my tongue can sing of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. You don't want sacrifices. If I gave an entirely burnt offering, you wouldn't be pleased. A broken spirit is my sacrifice to God. You won't despise a broken heart that is crushed. The word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson tonight is from the Gospel of Matthew, the section of the gospel that is called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is a speaker throughout uh, this section. We're going to pick it about halfway through in the sixth chapter, reading verses 1 through 6, and then catching up again at verse 11 and going on. Jesus says, Be careful that you don't practice your religion in front of people to draw their attention. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Whenever you give to the poor, don't blow your trumpet as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, so that they may get praise from people. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that you may give to the poor in secret. Your father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. And when you fast, don't put on a sad face like the hypocrites. They distort their faces so people will know that they are fasting. I assure you that they have their reward. When you fast, brush your hair and wash your face. Then you won't look like you are fasting to people, but only to your father who is present in that secret place. Your father who sees in secret will reward you. Stop collecting treasure for your own benefit on earth, where moth and rust eat them and where thieves break in and steal them. Instead, collect treasures for yourselves in heaven where moth and rust don't eat them and where thieves don't break in and steal them, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. 
Tonight we begin the season of Lent with an invitation for our own uh, spiritual growth and renewal in the coming weeks. The section I read from Matthew's Sermon on the Mount is Jesus talking about a faith-filled life, and he mentions several specific spiritual practices of that faithful life, uh, the giving of alms, uh, the praying, and fasting. Giving alms, of course, has a rich history in both the Old and New Testament. Alms was a way that the poor could be cared for, and it was done in many forms. Alms could be money, or it could be food, or some personal help to overcome some life obstacle. Uh, Jesus encouraged us to give alms, but always with this caveat, don't do it to get noticed. Uh, Do it secretly, in private. Don't let anybody know what you are doing, because you do it because you want to please God, not others. And Jesus commands his followers to pray, but with the same warning. Prayer is not to be a performance, something to gain the attention of someone else. And that's always the difficulty with public prayer in front of others, is wanting to get the words just right, to turn a beautiful phrase, to say a prayer that would be so moving of people that... uh, they would thank you for the prayer, but you wonder if they're thanking you just because you had a beautifully turned phrase. A place where most of us pray is in private and secret, and the wonder about private prayer is that you lay your heart before God. You can lay out your whole life before God, and life is often messy, and so our prayers sometimes can reflect the messiness uh, of our life. The other uh, spiritual exercise that Jesus talks about, of course, is fasting, not a spiritual exercise with which I have much experience. I have tried it a few times, uh, and frankly, it did not uh, have the intended uh, movement of me closer to the Spirit of God. Uh, It is simply a form of self-denial, and that's a good thing to have some control and some discipline over the self. Uh, But just like Fasting, uh, fasting just like alms and prayer, don't do it in such a way to call attention to yourself. The fasting should be its own reward. Of course, these are just three spiritual practices, and there are dozens and dozens more, but I think that Jesus would offer us the same warning about any of those spiritual practices, is don't do it because you want to get noticed for doing it, Do it because you think it is going to move you closer to God. One of the things that I try to challenge myself to do every year is to read a really big book, and not the big book of AA, but a book that is, say, over 500 pages, uh, because I have a tendency to get tired of the process of reading before I get to the end of a book, and it doesn't matter whether it's a book of theology or a history book, or a novel. Uh, There are a lot of books on my bookshelves that have a bookmark stuck in a little bit more than halfway and not all the way to the end. So for me, it's simply a challenge for self-discipline to take a really big book and read it all the way uh, to the end. But your Lenten discipline should be something more than being able to get the end and say, I did it, I made it, you know, thank goodness the finish line wasn't further away or I might have have, uh, failed. The goal uh, for any of us is to draw closer to the heart of God. And that is uh, the quest that we are on. Not to read the book all the way to the end, not to uh, pray the perfect prayer, or to uh, give alms in a way that uh, helps lots and lots and lots of people and gets us lots and lots of accolades. Uh, The quest is that in whatever we do, whatever practice we undertake during this season, is that we might draw closer to the heart of God. So I don't know what Lenten practice you may choose, or if you'll choose any Lenten practice at all. I hope for you that it is a holy and spiritually uplifting Lent, and that if you do choose a particular spiritual practice, that it will indeed draw you nearer to the heart of God. Amen.
Will you join me in the litany of penance, which is printed in your order of worship for this evening? Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have not listened to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess to you, O God, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives. Have mercy on us, O God. For our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, have mercy on us, O God. For our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, have mercy on us, O God. For our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work, have mercy on us, O God. For our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, have mercy on us, O God. Accept our repentance, O God, for the wrongs we have done, for our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Have mercy on us, O God. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our own prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, have mercy on us, O God. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Turn to us in your mercy and redeem us. Amen. The liturgy for the sacrament of the Lord's Supper is in the worship materials sent to you. The Gospels show us Jesus teaching, healing, and eating. He blesses a few loaves of bread and feeds 5,000. He invites himself to Zacchaeus' house and has dinner with a motley crew. He shares a meal with his disciple and transforms dinner into sacrament. We come to this table that we might feast with Jesus. This is his table, not ours. And Jesus invites all to come, sit, eat, and be renewed. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the beginning of creation, you brought forth life upon this earth and created humanity to live in a loving relationship with you. You called Abraham and Sarah to a land and made an everlasting covenant to be their God. Through your servant Moses, slaves were brought to freedom. You have used kings, prophets, and common folk to remind people of your great love for them. But history shows a people bent on turning away from you. At the right time, you sent Jesus to show us the fullness of your love. He healed the sick. He welcomed children. He taught the grace of forgiveness and mercy. Yet his compassion was seen as a threat, and his faithfulness led to his suffering. The night of his arrest, he gathered with his disciples for a meal. He took bread and wine and shared them with everyone at the table. We join the disciples present that night and those through the ages who have come to this table and shared this meal. Gracious God, come and be part of this meal. Bless this bread as the body of Christ and this wine as his blood. May these elements be means of your grace in our lives. As we join ourselves with the disciples from ages past and those yet to come, renew our faith, strengthen our resolve, and empower us to faithful and obedient service to our servant Lord. 
Strengthen us to witness to your love poured out for the whole world in Jesus Christ our Lord. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread after giving thanks to God. He broke it in the presence of his disciples and offered it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. In the same manner, after the supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God, blessed it, and offered it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Drink of it, all of you in remembrance of me. And now, wherever you are, we invite you to take the elements you have with you to celebrate this grace of God given to us all. And let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this sacrament given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ to make us new and whole and to draw us together with your disciples throughout the world that we truly might be servants of our servant Lord reaching out to the world with the faith, hope, and love he engenders in each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this Ash Wednesday service from Parkway Presbyterian Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. I hope that this is a fitting way for you to begin the season of Lent as we walk with Jesus on his way to Jerusalem. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.